Hey everybody, today we're talking about powers of ten with the help of Ten Man. Ten Man reminds us there was a time that we learned how to count by tens, and we would call those multiples of ten. Today he's going to teach us about powers of ten. Before we do that, we have to learn a new vocabulary word. I know you're excited, and that is the word exponent. Can you say exponent? For our purposes today, exponent means the number of times we're going to multiply a number by itself. Hmm, what does an exponent look like? Well, it looks like a tiny number written to the right and kind of up of our other number. So this little number is called the exponent, and this bigger number is called the base. So what do these numbers mean? Well, let's investigate. If we have 10 to the first power, that just means we have 1 10. We're not multiplying it by itself any more times than that. But if we have 10 to the second power, we're multiplying 10 by itself two times, which gives us 100. And if you could guess, 10 to the third is 10 times 10 times 10, so three of those. And of course, 10 to the fourth would be four tens, not 10 times four. It's 10 times itself four times. Do you notice a pattern here? Did you notice when my exponent is one that I have one zero, and when my exponent's two, I have two zeros, and my exponent's three, I have three zeros, and when my exponent's four, I have four zeros, a pattern. So if I gave you a number with five zeros and told you it's 10 to the something, what would that something be? If you said five, you are correct. A few fun facts. One is that any number to the power of zero equals one. Weird. Any number to the power of two can be called squared. Any number to the power of three can be called cubed. Okay, fun facts over. Let's try an example. Here I have five times ten squared, which means I have five times two tens or five times one hundred, which I know is five hundred. But today we're kind of looking for a shortcut to solve these problems, so let's take a look at our place values. I started with a five in the ones place. When I multiply by ten, I'm increasing my digit by a place value, so that five in the ones becomes a five in the tens. When I multiply by ten again, everybody moves up a place value, and I see that I've ended up with five hundred. Cool. Let's try it with a decimal. Here I have five and one tenth times ten squared, which I know is five and one tenth times ten times ten, five and one tenth times one hundred, which is five hundred ten. So what happened here? Well, I had a five in the ones and a one in the tenths, and I multiplied by ten and everybody increased by a place value. And then I multiplied by ten again and everybody increased by a place value. And I just fill in my zero to make it pretty, and you see we have five hundred and ten. So if I look at these two examples side by side, do you notice anything they have in common? <laughs> when I had five times 10 to the second power, my decimal, which was invisibly after the five, has now magically moved to after these two zeros. And when I had five and one tenth, and the decimal was between the five and the one, now it's magically between these two zeros. So what happened? Well, if it helps you to remember that the decimal moves to the right the same number of places as our exponent, that's fine, as long as you know that what's really happening is your digits are increasing by place values. Let's try an example. Here I have three and 12 hundredths times 10 to the fourth. We know we could multiply that all out, and we know how to do that, but today we've learned a new way. So I start with my decimal, where it goes, but I'm multiplying by 10 to the fourth, so I'm magically moving it one, two, three, four places, new decimal spot, and filling in these holes with zeros. So you see now that I have 31,200, where my decimal is invisibly right there. So everybody has increased by four place values. That decimal just rolled itself onto the right. Okay, you try one of those, I'll meet you back here.